What's up guys? Congratulations, you have made it to lesson 6. You have made it to this lesson, that means you are really serious about learning this amazing tool, uh, Unreal Engine for ArchVis. I want to give you a great pat on the back and also want to thank you for your support. Thank you for all your great comments. Again, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have or if there's anything specific that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to comment in this video. So after this basic tutorial, I'm working on some really very cool stuff and um, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel and let's keep in touch. So let's continue with the lesson. Today we are going to go through about materials in Unreal Engine. So I thought what I will do is um, I'll import some furnitures and walk through some basic materials that are more commonly used in ArchVis. So for today's lesson, I'm going to import a sofa and a lamp. So I'm going, I'm going to just quickly run through how I import them. Basically, they are, it's the same way as um, lesson 1 to 3. So you, you should be pretty familiar with uh, how to do this now. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go through how to do it. Um, so before I continue, I just uh, want to show you what we'll be covering through in this lesson, um, section 6A. So as I mentioned just now, we'll be importing the furnitures. Um, there'll be some issues with light maps when we import the furnitures and I'll talk about it. And then I'll discuss a bit about the materials and we'll create our first uh, rustic looking uh, material uh, metal that we can use for the lamp. So let's continue. So, I have included the furniture's uh, 3D Max files into the project folder and I'll be sharing the project folder with you so that you can practice together with me while I do the tutorial. Again, so let's go to our 3D Max file. So let's just open our sofa file. So again, what I have done is I have uh, renamed the meshes so that each mesh is unique. And then I applied my steamroller script onto every mesh. I'm not going to do it because I have already done it. So as you can see, there's already an unwrapped UVW in my meshes. And then I will highlight, export it via the TS tools which again I've already done so um, and then copy the locations back in UE4 what I'm going to do is I'm going to import some then desktop assets so far export I'm going to import my meshes and tick generate light maps edit oh copy selected location edit paste okay so let's move our sofa into our home Tada Okay, I have done the same thing for the lamp, so Let's just do it for the lamp. It's already in my export folder.
so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger scale it by three times okay so there you go I have my lamp and I have my sofa again um, I like to get a bit organized so I'm going to create a texture folder to put my textures oh no I don't want it to be under export I have a materials folder I have a texture folder and I have a geometry folder okay so again I say I want to be a bit more organized so later we will rename our materials to have a prefix M textures with a prefix T so it's um, I feel it's pretty important to be organized to you know to know where we put our stuff and to name them properly sometimes when we get um, um, when we are in the zone when we're in our creative zone we, we tend to just want to let our artistic flair you know run but I feel let's uh, be professional and be organized so let's uh, keep our things uh, in the correct places okay so before um, we continue I'm just going to do a quick light build to see if uh, my lab maps are working correctly so let's just do that right now okay our light build is done as you can see there are some black patches on the sofa and also on the lamp as well so this is because of light maps if you unwrap the light maps properly instead of using the steam roller script the black patches will not be so obvious you know if you unwrap it manually then it will look better but of course we will have to spend extra time to unwrap it and so you know time is money and more time to complete the project so especially um, curvy or organic looking uh, meshes like sofa pillows you know we will tend to have this problem where the the light maps will not be unwrapped well using the steam roller script but for the purpose of this tutorial i won't go in depth on how to unwrap the light maps um, manually so as a quick around we can work around this issue by um, increasing the light maps resolution by when you go to the mesh and you go to this portion called lighting we can override the light map resolution and increase the resolution this will remove the black patches but of course there's a drawback to this um, if we have too many things with very high resolutions it will increase our build time our baking time or our build time so it's a give and take you know um, I feel in conclusion it is important to invest time to unwrap our light maps properly especially for furnitures where we can reuse you know but for the purpose of this tutorial I won't go through this um, because we are focusing on materials right now so we'll just increase the resolution and this should remove the black patches so let's try that okay I'm gonna highlight all the meshes I'm gonna change it to 128 okay the pillows I probably will give to 56 um, my lamp I'll put 256 as well and let's try building the light again okay so I have rebuilt the light and as you can see now it looks much better you know the sofa is uh, there's no longer black patches on the sofa and the lamp as well it looks pretty decent yeah so um, again uh, I 
cannot stress how important light maps are in Unreal Engine. So um, let's continue. In ArchViz, a lot of people ask the question, what makes a scene looks real? You know, so personally, I feel um, the materials and the lighting are the two key ingredients to make a scene look realistic. So having a good grasp of materials and lighting is very important in ArchViz. So today we're going to learn about materials. So I'm going to work on the lamp first. So let's continue with the lamp. Okay, so for the lamp, I'm going to import a very simple metallic map, um, which is this one, it's under hanging lamp. Okay, let's rename it texture, metallic lamp. Okay. So I'm going to create a material for the lamp and I'm going to call it uh, material or M up to you metallic lamp okay so let's just go through some of the, the, the stuff in material editor Okay, so this is the blend mode. Um, most of the time, we'll be using opaque. Um, generally, I will use mask for foliage or trees. Translucent is usually used for glass or water. And then shading model, again, most of the time, we'll use default lead. Um, for trees, I'll use two-sided. And... I will go through cloth with you when we do the sofa. Mm, the rest I don't really use it. Mm, yeah, so these are the more important things to take note. Uh, the base color, we can attach a diffuse map or what we call an albedo map or a constant um, a solid color. So when we want to put a solid color, we just call out the constant tree node. Okay, constant tree vector. And you can choose your color any way you like it and connect it to your base color. Okay. For metallic node, con uh, it controls how metallic a material looks like. So if you are doing uh, metallic materials like aluminium or uh, chrome, then you assign a constant want to the metallic. Let me just show you, show you uh, how it looks like. Yeah, let's put a constant tree vector. Uh, just just any color will do just want to show you some how how it behaves okay so if I put one to the metallic as you can see it looks a bit like like gold now if I put zero then it's it looks plastic key okay for specular I don't really use it I only use it um, for foliage or cloth you know, if I want to remove the specularity of the material. Roughness controls how well light is reflected on the material. So zero roughness is for very smooth surfaces. Like if you want to do a glass or, um, you know, glossy laminate, then you use uh, a roughness of zero. A roughness of one will, will, will give you a very matte look. Um, emissive color will go through when we when we do the lamp, the bulb. Um, the normal map is pretty self-explanatory. Um, so that's it. The rest are uh, world position. These are more advanced stuff that um, we won't go through in this in this uh, section six. Okay, so I'm gonna create a a silver looking uh, met metallic uh, material for the lamp. So let's uh, let's go. 
Okay. So what I'm going to going to do is I'm going to drag the texture that I have just now, the metallic texture, and I'm going to attach it to the base color. Okay. I'm going to give it a metallic node. And then I'm going to use the same texture and attach it to the roughness you know, uh, roughness node. Okay. It's pretty easy, right? So once that is done, I'm going to assign my material metallic lamp to my lamp. Okay. So this red color portion is the one that I want to give the metallic material to. So I just choose the metallic lamp material. So, I think it's a bit too glossy, so I'm just going to uh, decrease the, or rather increase the roughness a bit. So what I can do is, sorry, yeah, in increase the roughness. So I'll add, I'll do an addition. So maybe I'll just put... Uh, So you see, it doesn't look so as glossy anymore. Yep, so this is the feel that I want to go for. So as you can see, why I did the add is because a roughness of 0 will give me a very smooth look. A roughness of 1 will give me a very matte look. So when I, when I add a constant of 0.3, what it does is it increases the roughness. Um, from the map itself, which is why it, it doesn't look as glossy anymore. So Yep, I'm pretty happy with this uh, material. So let's move on